Welcome to the Grinders Table, the podcast where we sit with C suite executives and founders who are taking their industry by storm to figure out how you can build an exceptional career and business. Together, we'll try to uncover how they are both defined the odds and what you can learn from their experience. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Grinders Table. And with me, we have an amazing person. I, I call him the Data King, um, Maxim. I don't like introducing people, so I'll allow Maxim introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, very quickly, uh, my name is Maxim. I'm a senior venture builder with uh, a company called BFA, uh, within a program called Catalyst Fund, um, where we are accelerating uh, uh, startups, um, mainly in Africa as well as in uh, Mexico and India. We work mainly in the inclusive fintech space and overall in the resilient tech uh, startup space. Um, and um, I've also started this, uh, this project called uh, Africa the Big Deal, uh, uh, through which we are tracking uh, deals, investment, uh, deals I mean, investment into startups in Africa. Uh, so all the deals that are, that are above $100,000. Uh, and yeah, we have uh, compiled also a couple of newsletters on this. And yeah, there's quite, quite a bit of data out there that we started to, to produce. Interesting. Where did this, your love for data, come about? Oh, uh, I don't know. That must, that must be my, my, my nerd side. <laughs> uh, um, I, one thing I tend to, to tell to, to, to students or like um, people in the university and so on is that one of the most useful class I ever took in my business school uh, was, the, was a class on Excel. Um, and how to use Excel better and like make better use of, of all the tools and so on uh, within Excel. And, and it's true that <laughs> to this day, I'm still using stuff I learned back then. Um, and so, yeah, I guess I've always been interested to, you know, try and, and, and you know, crunch, crunch data. Uh, yeah, it's, it's something I enjoy doing. So I guess <laughs> that's, that's where it comes from. Yeah. And um, I mean, most of your work has, is, has been done within Africa. I know BFA Global is literally global, but why Africa for you? Yeah, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. So it, it all started uh, a couple of years ago uh, when I joined a company called GSMA. Uh, back then, we had a program called the Ecosystem Accelerator, where we, uh, we supported startups in emerging markets and helped them work with mobile operators around the world and uh, a number of them were, were in Africa. Uh, I think we ended up backing somewhere around 20 startups in Africa, including uh, s- s- small startups back then that became a bit bigger, like uh, Farm Quality uh, or Twiga Foods. Uh, and so uh, that's where really it started. And, and I guess the, you know, the, the enthusiasm, resilience, capacity, and, you know, amazing motivation of uh, startups entrepreneurs in the continent is really what 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 gained me over um and yeah that's that's you know since, since this co- first couple of projects with entrepreneurs in uh, back then uh, there, were, there were some in kenya in egypt in Cote d'ivoire um it's i really thought okay you know that's that's what i want to keep doing uh yeah just trying to help a little bit people who are really superheroes in my views so yeah that's yeah. where it started um to something more fun what, what would you say are your top influences that has guided your career my top influences uh wow that's a that's a that's a, that's a good one uh good good question um uh, for my career hmm. i haven't prepared this question at all uh, <laughs> It's 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 tricky. I mean, <clears throat> there's no no not a specific name that comes to mind. Um, but maybe what I, what I want to say here is that I've had the chance in my career to work with amazing people um, that sometimes were were my managers, um, and uh, and that has been really a, a source of motivation. I think when you have the chance to to work for people you admire, um, 
the work suddenly becomes a lot greater. Um, so yeah, I mean, here I, I, I'm, I'm very happy to mention one of my of my managers who, who was a friend, a friend first, who was then I mean a colleague first, then was a, 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 a became a friend and then became a manager, and now is my is my partner in Africa, the big deal, and that's that's uh, someone called Max Cuvelier. Uh, mm-hmm. For whom I have uh, really a, a huge respect and admiration, um, and so yeah. When again, you know, when you work with 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 people that that you admire in their in their day to day work and in the the values they they fight for and so on, um, yeah, it's 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 really fun. Uh, it makes it makes the career a lot better. So that's what I've I've followed since then and. Yeah, we're trying to work with people I admire. Actually, that, that, that is actually an interesting insight, working with people you admire and who your values align with. Um, th- my next question will still be around working with people. And as people with an entrepreneurial mindset, you know, we're go-getters, we like to create things. You find that a lot of entrepreneurs that are in this bucket tend to struggle when they are paired with other people, when they work with other people. What would be your tips to working with people and building teams? That's that's probably the other stuff to do. Um, you know, recruiting people, hiring the right team, uh, is and managing people is is probably the other thing in, in any job. Uh, it's also the most fascinating one, but but it's really hard. Uh, I think the first tip, and especially targeted to to entrepreneurs, is uh, for your first call of hires really spend the time uh, and uh, yeah really try to try to recruit people you you know you admire again I think, I think uh, you know it, it can be uh, reciprocal um, you, you can work for someone you admire you can also hire somebody you admire for their skills for their values for their their background and so on uh, and and so that's 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 really important um, and really spend the time to do the to make to do the first hire right, uh, the first couple of hires, first, I don't know, 20, 30 people you hire really um, dedicate a lot of effort and time to that. Um, and ask yourself the question. I think, you know, the more you grow in your career, the more you realize that, you know, when you initially, when you're still fairly junior and I don't know, you, you're, you're asked to interview someone, you're just thinking skill sets, you know, just thinking, okay, do, do they have the, do they tick the boxes, are, are they capable of, of doing X and Y, do they have this skill set and so on? And the more you grow in your career and you realize that yes, skill sets are extremely important, of course, but it's a lot about human interactions at the end. And so I would really say to entrepreneurs, you know, hire people with whom you fit, you know, with whom you feel that that something that, that a relationship can be built. Um, and uh, one one thing I ask myself sometimes when when I when I recruit somebody, you know. Like, would I go on holidays with that person? You know, would I, would I travel with that person? And and if so, would that be something nice or would it be something painful to do? Like, and 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 I think that that's you know, it doesn't have to be always the case. But I think for for people that you're going to work so intensely with, like co-founders or or people in your management team, if you're if you're a founder, I think it's you know, making those relationships enjoyable, not just purely professional, but also nice. Um, is essential so yeah that would be my recommendation uh pay attention to 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 human interactions as much as you do skill sets yeah um i mean there there is a popular saying that that talks about how data is the foundation of everything and that's something that you are very interested in for people building out their businesses, how what how would you how do you advise them to approach the use of data? Uh, it's absolutely critical, uh, and I would say plan with the long term in mind. So, you know, when you build your um, your startup, when you build your your platform, and so on, um, think from day one. You know, is is what I'm building right now scalable? Is the data infrastructure uh, scalable? Um, you know, it's it's better to underutilize something than than you know build something that's going to be maxed out very quickly. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that's, that's the first, the first thing It's like when you architect everything, um, uh, really a plan for the plan for the longer run. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I would say data from your customers are, are gold, 
Uh, so yeah, but, you know, treat it as such, uh, be respectful of it, and uh, and yeah, look at it carefully. Um, never ignore it. I would say, um, mm. and and on the on the back of that. You know, that's, I mean, uh, obviously I'm saying a lot of common sense stuff here, but, you know, talk to your customers. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, you know, often you see founders that are trapped in their day-to-day operations and forget to ask, you know, they're building roadmaps, they're building new features and so on, and they forget to check the customers if that makes sense to them. Uh, is that something that they really want? Like, especially in the B2B space, you know, like, oh, let's add this feature, let's add this and do it and that. And then you end up with, like, a massive suites of, of products with huge amount of features and you realize that people don't use them. Uh, so yeah, I think that's really important to always talk to a customer. And, and sometimes it's, it's good to, to sort of set it in an artificial way, right? Say, okay, I will, I will start every single of my day with a call to a customer or um, I will take every Wednesday afternoon, I will spend two hours um, scheduling calls with customers. Um, just to make to see how they are doing, to understand how they are enjoying or not the product, blocking points they face, and just to remain, you know, really the, the feet on the ground, um, and to to make sure that you keep understanding what your product is doing and, and where it could go next. Um, so yeah, um, it's not mm-hmm. just our data; it's also you know, sort of, you know, more qualitative data gathered from customers. It's really important. Build and talk to customers. This is what you should be focused on. Yeah. Yeah, and um, as entrepreneurs, as C-suite executives, as business people, we tend to work, 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 work. Uh, work literally never ends. What do you do to relax and um, reset? Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I am very lucky to be uh, the father of three amazing kids uh, and, uh, and the husband of an amazing wife. And so... Uh, I I would say a lot of my time uh, outside work is spent with them. Uh, it's not always pure relax. <laughs> Sometimes it also comes with uh, uh, with a lot of work. <laughs> but it's uh, but it's it's really for me the way to sort of recharge the battery. Um, and then when I have a little bit of time left, <laughs> I also try to I, I try to, to do sports and. Uh, one thing I try to do almost every day is run, so I, I go run in the morning. Um, that's a good way for me to, uh, yeah, to let's say the, let the steam out and start the, start the day on a, on a good note. Uh, and I realize now that if, if I don't run in the morning, I am a little bit more tense at work and things are harder, decisions are harder to make, and yeah. So, you know, like I, another good advice is uh, <laughs> do sports. It really helps <laughs> with everything. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Maxim. You really, really dropped a lot of insights and um, we really, really appreciate all you shared. Um, to round up, I'd like you to give us like, like three insights from your business or career that um, people can people can leave this podcast with. Three insights uh, on, just on my career. Yeah. Lessons from your career that, is, that can be relevant to anybody. Oh, lessons from my career. Um, uh... Choose what, so there are a couple of things. First of all, uh, work can be fun. It can be enjoyable. Mm. It doesn't have to be tough. Uh, I had a not so good experience one time with a company and I decided to leave. And the reason I left was like, no, I'm not, I told my boss, I'm not enjoying what I'm doing here. I don't think it's interesting. I don't think it's fun. And his answer confirmed to me that they told me, you know, work is not fun. It's not supposed to be fun. And, uh, and I left. And after that, I, I, I joined a very um, fun and exciting role. Um, and since then, I've only done uh, jobs in which I really enjoyed and actually had fun at work. So that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, go for people, always. Uh, you know, you can have the most well-paid job, uh, but that will make you happy. Once, once a month when you get the paycheck. Uh, but if you work with a fantastic team, uh, you will be happy every day, really. Uh, you would go to, to the office or, or to your Zoom calls 
uh, being happy to 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 see your team again. And and so yeah, I think that's that's really important. It's all about people at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, choose, choose yeah before accepting a new job or before you know joining a startup or whatever. I would say you know talk with as many people as you can in the company and see if you could if you, if you find yourself fitting with them and if you if you like them. Um, I think that's that's really important. Uh, and yeah, uh, be curious. That would be my my third one. You know, try 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 new things. You, you don't have to be miserable in your role. There are plenty of stuff outside. Uh, so yeah. That's all on today's episode of The Grinders Table. And thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Montior OM. That's at Montior for Miss Time French OM. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.